So apparently, OpenAI is working on their own X-style social media network. And they reportedly already have an internal prototype, described as ChatGPT's image generation, but with a social feed. Meanwhile, Google is out here literally talking to animals. They just announced major progress with their new foundational model, Dolphin Gemma, trained to decode the structure of dolphin vocalizations and generate new dolphin-like sounds. And finally, Kling AI just dropped Kling 2.0, their latest AI video model, and it's shocking the entire industry. Some of these clips just look insanely real. It's honestly getting hard to tell what's AI and what's not. Let's get into it. So starting with OpenAI, this week has been massive for them. They dropped GPT 4.1, a family of three models designed specifically for developers. These models support up to 1 million tokens, the largest context window OpenAI has ever released. They're also insanely cost efficient and even outperform GPT 4.5 on the majority of benchmarks. Then, just a few days later, they dropped O3 and O4 Mini, their latest reasoning models, which have basically hit state-of-the-art across the board. From coding and math, to instruction following, even multimodal reasoning, they also represent a new generation of AI models, where tool use and agentic capabilities are built right in. Now, I already covered these releases in separate videos this week, so we won't dive deeper into them here. But one announcement that kind of flew under the radar, OpenAI is apparently planning to build their own social media platform. So just off the bat, you might recall that Sam Altman actually tweeted about this relatively recently in response to reports that Meta was planning to release a standalone AI app to compete with OpenAI's ChatGPT. Altman said, okay, fine, maybe we'll do a social app. And well, he wasn't kidding. As you can see, OpenAI is working on X-like social media network, The Verge reports. Now, we don't have many details, but we know that there's an internal prototype focused on ChatGPT's image generation with a social feed. It's also still unclear whether this will be a standalone application or integrated directly into ChatGPT. They go on to state this could escalate tensions between Altman and Elon Musk, who, as you're probably well aware of, have had some major beef in the past, and still do to this day. I mean, Musk has been actively trying to stop OpenAI from restructuring into a for-profit company for a while now, pretty much ever since he left back in 2018. He even attempted to buy OpenAI's non-profit arm for $97 billion just two months ago, which Altman responded to, no thank you, but we will buy X for $9.74 billion if you want, which Musk further replied, swindler. So obviously these two are not very fond of each other. But legally speaking, Musk's attempt to stop OpenAI from restructuring into a for-profit company, or as OpenAI puts it, Musk's latest attempt to slow down OpenAI has basically been rejected by the courts. Although, in fact, just recently, less than one week ago, it came out that a group of OpenAI employees are actually backing Musk's lawsuit against OpenAI. According to Reuters, a dozen former OpenAI employees filed a legal brief on Friday, April 11th, backing co-founder Elon Musk's lawsuit aimed at keeping the non-profit status of OpenAI. So without getting too much into it, what's clear is that this won't be the last we hear of this. I mean, not only the feud between Sam Altman and Elon Musk, but the idea of OpenAI straying away from their non-profit open history. I mean, come on, their name is literally OpenAI, and they're basically the only big AI company left who hasn't dropped an open source model. I think the pressure is getting to Sam Altman though, especially now with the reports of a dozen OpenAI employees backing Musk's lawsuit. Because in his most recent interview, he seemed to have a different tone and was really emphasizing their new plans to release a frontier open source model. Check this out. I think open source has an important place. Um, we, we actually just last night hosted our first like community session to kind of decide the parameters of our open source model um, and how we want to shape it. I, we're going to do a very powerful open source model. Um, I think this is important. We're going to do something near the frontier, I think better than any current open source model out there. This will not be all, like there will be people who use this in ways that some people in this room, maybe you or I don't like. Um, but 
there is going to be an important place for open source models as part of the constellation here. Um, and, you know, I think we were late to act on that, but we're going to do it really well now. So that would be pretty interesting if OpenAI just drops an open source model better than anything Meta, Mistral, or anyone else has released so far. DeepSeek 2, I mean, it would definitely shake up the AI landscape. But back to the report on OpenAI's social media network. If you were maybe wondering, why would OpenAI want to build a social media network? Like, are they trying to compete with X or Meta? Just why would they want to do this? Well, the answer is yes. They are trying to compete with Meta and X and Google and pretty much every tech slash AI company out there. But there's also a data angle. I mean, think about it. The amount of personal data Meta and even XAI has access to, thanks to their social media platforms, is way beyond what OpenAI could ever hope for. Now, granted, OpenAI is starting to build its own kind of moat of personal data as well, especially with their latest memory update, which allows ChatGPT to remember all of your past conversations. But again, the amount of high quality and personal data, for example, Meta has access to with Instagram and Facebook is going to be a major advantage as these AI systems become more personalized. And as the demand for more personalized and contextually aware AI systems increases. So, I mean, OpenAI is just playing chess. They're making moves, they're looking to make moves, and I wouldn't be surprised if they go ahead and do this. But now, this brings us to OpenAI's largest competitor, the giant they've been aiming to take down ever since they started, and the giant that's been focusing more and more on AI. If it wasn't obvious enough, I'm talking about Google. Now, Google has really started to take their AI game seriously lately. They dropped a ton of stuff last week, which we covered, like Agent Space, the Agent Development Kit, the Agent to Agent Protocol, and of course, last month, they released Gemini 2.5 Pro. Gemini 2.5 Pro is arguably the best coding model available, although OpenAI might have something to say about that with the new O3 and O4 mini models they just dropped which do appear to be better based on benchmarks. But if we look at the LM Arena leaderboards, where you can get a real sense of how people actually feel about these models, Gemini 2.5 Pro is still sitting comfortably at the top. It literally hasn't moved since it came out. And if we look a bit deeper at the categories, you can see that it's first place in every single one. So obviously these could change. I mean, the full O3 and O4 mini aren't on these charts yet, just because they're so new. But still, this model is no joke. And it's clear again that Google is starting to take their AI game seriously. I think you can even say that they're in the lead right now. My current rankings would probably be Google in first place, then OpenAI, then Anthropic, but that could change. And then I guess XAI, maybe Mistral. I don't know. After that, it gets pretty muddy. By the way, do you guys agree with that ranking? If not, I'm curious to know what your ranking would be and why. Let me know in the comments. Also, what's crazy is that Gemini 2.5 Pro is completely free to use. A good example of something only Google could afford to do, thanks to their insane amount of resources. Another good example of something only Google could do is talking to animals. I know, that was a great segue. But Google just gave us some more insight into their ongoing project of decoding the dolphin language with AI. Check out this incredible video. Dolphin Gemma is the first LLM trained to try to understand dolphin language. Dolphin Gemma will input sounds. Once a dolphin starts doing a vocalization like a whistle, it can try to complete the end of it. When you're doing a Google search, right, it's finishing your sentence, right? Dolphin Gemma has Denise's data and sort of encapsulates a lot of the knowledge and experience she has in it. But it's also small enough we can train it with more data as we get it. We can actually keep on fine-tuning the model as we go and hopefully get better and better understanding of what the dolphins are producing. We do not know if animals have words. Dolphins can recognize themselves in the mirrors. They use tools, so they're smart. But language is still the last barrier. So feeding dolphin sounds into an AI model like Dolphin Gemma will give us a really good look at if there are patterns, subtleties that humans can't pick out. If dolphins have language, then they probably also have culture. You're going to understand what priorities they have. What do they talk about? The goal would be to someday 
speak dolphin. And we're really trying to crack the code. So this is pretty insane. I mean, if they can actually do this, then how long until we can talk to dogs or cats or any other animal for that matter? I mean, I know this is a bit esoteric, but imagine having on a pair of AI glasses that can essentially analyze an animal in real time, understand its body language, what it's trying to communicate, and even maybe allow you to talk back to it with real time translation. I truly wonder if this will ever be possible, and if it does end up ever being possible, what will we uncover from being able to literally communicate with other species, especially the ones that live underwater? Now, back to some more Google news, they're rolling out VO2, their AI video model, to Gemini advanced users. It will be integrated directly within Gemini. So I know OpenAI has been planning to do this as well, integrating their video model Sora directly into ChatGPT. But I guess Google has beaten them on this front. I honestly feel like Google sometimes doesn't get the credit or maybe the attention they deserve in terms of their AI releases. But let's not forget, Google was really the one who started this whole AI thing. I mean, their AI system AlphaGo that beat the best Go player in the world back in 2016 is truly what kicked off this whole AI era. And if they had AlphaGo back in 2016, then imagine what else they have. Like, even though OpenAI seems to have surpassed them in terms of model capabilities, or is at least at their level, they must have some insane stuff going on behind closed doors. And on that note, David Silver, one of the principal research scientists at Google who actually worked on the AlphaGo team, recently shared some pretty wild insights into what is going on, or what has been going on, behind closed doors at Google. Take a look at this. Can AI design its own reinforcement learning algorithms? Well, funnily enough, we have actually done some work in this area. It's work we actually did a few years ago, but is coming out now. And what we did was actually to build a system that, through trial and error, through reinforcement learning itself, figured out what algorithm was best at reinforcement learning. It literally went one level meta, and it <laughs> learned how to build its own reinforcement learning system, and incredibly, actually outperformed all of the human reinforcement learning algorithms that we'd come up with ourselves over many, many years in the past. So apparently, we already have self-improving AI, and have had it for years. And it's also apparently coming out now. So to be honest, I haven't heard anyone else from Google talk about this. But I guess we'll soon find out what this is all about. Alright, now that we talked about everything that's going on with OpenAI and its competitors, and how Google is really pushing to solidify its position as the AI company, it's time to talk about what else is going on in the AI space. Starting with Meta, who really isn't doing too well. According to this Fortune article, Meta's AI research lab is dying a slow death, some insiders say. And Meta prefers to call it a new beginning. So, to give you the quick rundown of why Meta AI is supposedly dying, basically, their latest release, Llama 4, just wasn't up to par. I mean, like, really not up to par. They performed terribly on benchmarks. And they were even involved in controversy after releasing a separate version of Llama 4, specifically fine-tuned for human preference on the LM arena. That's the arena with the leaderboards we looked at earlier. This arena is purely based on human preference. Literally anyone can go on this site and just pick between models all day, choosing which one they think generated the best prompt. And so, in order to kind of cheat the system, Meta released a model specifically designed to be engaging for humans, and tried to pass it off as the actual Llama 4, which it was clearly not. And the actual Llama 4 actually performs way worse. So yeah, they also talk about a bunch of employees leaving because of this, and it's basically just not looking very good over there. That being said, they still of course have their social media platforms, insane amounts of data, and that sneaky reptilian Mark Zuckerberg. So I wouldn't count them out just yet. Moving on, we have some minor news from Anthropic, who's been extremely quiet this week. They launched Claude Research alongside a new Google Workspace integration. So basically, this is Anthropic's own deep research agent that can autonomously conduct research for you on the web. As they stated, they've also collaborated with Google to get this integrated inside of Workspace, which will allow Claude to connect with Google Apps, like Gmail, Google Calendar, Docs, and so on. Again, other than this, a very quiet week for Anthropic. Finally, we have to talk about Kling 2.0. 
If you haven't heard of Kling yet, they're one of the biggest names in AI video generation. They've been pushing the limits of what's possible for a while now, and their latest release, Kling 2.0, takes things to a whole new level. I mean, just look at the level of detail and hyper-realism in some of these clips. We're truly past the point of, does it look realistic, and are now asking, how is this even AI? The movement is fluid, the lighting is spot on, and the textures, from skin to reflections, are just insane. Other than the insane realism and how incredible these clips look, they did introduce a few new control tools like multi-elements editor and image restyling. But overall, I think just the quality and believability of these generations is what truly makes this release so insane. Like, I don't know guys, am I overreacting here or does this truly feel like a major leap forward? Anyway, this video is already getting super long and I still wanted to play you guys just one more clip. Now, this clip I'm about to show you guys is pretty wild. I don't know how credible it actually is, but I came across it on X and I thought I played for you guys. So check this out. So for example, a lot of people building agents have ind independently discovered sleep. The, oh, yeah. agent, the agents have to sleep because they have to compress memories and, and do like the deep REM thing where they actually turn those into long-term memory hmm. like we have like the computer agents have to do that <laughs> and humans so... have to do that right it's gnarly <laughs> I, i'm not kidding like uh go look up for those we need to eat sleep uh, for agents <laughs> <laughs> maybe so yeah again i don't know how legit this is but it would be pretty crazy if it's true I mean, we still barely understand how sleep for humans even works. So I wouldn't be so quick to dismiss this, even though it sounds pretty wild. Anyways, that's all for today in AI News. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI News just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.